What's up? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to create another organic Afro House track in Apple Studio. So in this case, I tried to integrate that very recognizable kind of music sound. And in this case, I'm paying more attention to the drums. So if you want to check out the sound, so the samples and the synths, which I'm going to use in this video, make sure to check out the chemistry producer bundle. The link will be in the description and there is also a free preview if you just want to mess around with some free samples. So let's get started right now. So first I'm adjusting the BPM. So in this case, let's adjust it to 119. So first I'm going to show you how to create all the melody elements and then add the drums. So for this video, I'm going to do the exact opposite. So I'm gonna use a piano. So in this case, I'm gonna pick a unique piano preset from the augmented grand piano. So this is a re so this is a unique plugin. As you can hear, there is some noise added to the background. So we're gonna reduce it a little bit like this. So first I'm gonna start off by building the chord progression. So I'm gonna create this track in a major scale, so major Ionian, and then I'm selecting C sharp. So C is the root note right now. So I'm gonna draw in the first note. So I'm drawing in F, G, C. So then I'm pitching it up one octave. Okay, that sounds great. So I'm copying it over, Control C, Control V. And then I'm picking the next root note, which is A sharp. And I'm not gonna follow the steps. So I'm gonna make sure this chord starts right here, should be on the grid like this. And then I'm making sure this chord fits the scale. So the next one, now we're gonna create something upwards. So I'm gonna copy this one over. So let's pick F, adjust this one and pitch this down one octave. Just pick the exact same chord. And then let's copy this one. And then we're gonna pick the note in between F and C. In this case, is this D. In Afro House, you want to make sure the piano chord progression contains enough high, mid and low frequencies to already make it sound full. You can easily apply this trick. So copy over the root notes, pitch them down one octave. So you create a more powerful chord progression. And later on, you can remove the low frequencies, which are colliding with the kick and the bass lines. So now I've played around with the velocity. So you can easily do this manually by just selecting a note like this by pressing command, selecting it, and then scroll up and down. So you're adjusting the velocity. You could also play around with the color, for example, in this preset from the augmented grand piano. You can make it sound softer. But in this case, we want to make sure it's in the background. Beautiful chord progression. So right now, let's add some low frequencies. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite synths, and this is a virtual synth, so the Mini V4. And there is a preset which fits almost every genre of all genres. It's a preset, the bass you're looking for. And then let's adjust the cutoff frequency. So we're just using the notes which contain low frequencies. So copy over the root notes. We're not gonna create a new pattern. Adding deep frequencies as you can hear. Turning up the velocity. So adding more volume in this case. Very organic sounding bass line. So I want to use another bass line. I'm using the Arturia CZ in this case, bass. So I found this preset and I think it sounds really cool. So we're copying it over. So I have to remove that ticking sound in the beginning. Again, adding low frequencies. I will could also use another layer from this one. So we're using this melodic sequence. Or adding it at the root node. And then we could, for example, play around with the brightness. So this is a sound which we, in the end, could layer with the drums. So right now, already, let's add some drum layers. So right now, we're going to build the foundation for this track. So at first, let's start off with a shaker loop. So 
I'm opening up the chemistry producer bundle, shaker. So let's pick this one. So we've created an eight bar loop. So paste it in. Okay, so right now we're gonna add a kick. So let's add this one and we're gonna add it at the first step. So there is a ticking sound in the beginning of the sample. And by adding the sample, we're adding a lot of transients to the track. Right now we're gonna add some percussions to add some rhythm. So let's open up the percussion folder. So for example, this tom and those two percussions. So this is the first percussion, which we're adding. Starting off for the simple groove. Okay, at the next one, so adding it at C, and this one right here. And later on, I'm gonna add some reverb to this layer. And at the third layer. So for now it needs another layer which adds some more texture to the background. So this is a new percussion loop which is pitched down. I'm gonna make sure it's in the background. Right here. So right now let's add a layer which contains some more high frequencies and which is very easy to add. So this is a hi-hat. So we add a longer one, which sounds softer. Add it right here, control C, control V. And then, and then drag the head pattern half a step to the right. I'm gonna randomize it like this, so it sounds more organic. But we're gonna make some tweaks to the drums. So in this case, I'm gonna keep it very simple. So I link all these layers to the mixer. I'm gonna add an amazing reverb, which is called the Reverb LX24. So I'm using this warehouse preset. I'm gonna adjust. Just some of the parameters. I'm gonna make sure it's not too wide. So I think right now it sounds perfect. So just try some presets. I just see dry wet and then make some tweaks. So keeping it very simple, do not make too much adjustments. So then we could, for example, use another layer and we could pick another sequence. So lately I like to use those noise grooves, or noise sequence sounds. C. So right now it sounds, I think, very cool at C. But also just the brightness, for example. Okay, so that's it. So we also definitely have to mix this layer and make sure it fits the other drums perfectly. So now I want to add a layer which plays one note and is often used as a drone sound, for example, which is not that common in this genre. So it's this strings pad. And we're gonna apply it in a unique way. Well, right now we have to adjust it, so doesn't contain a lot of high frequencies. So we adjust the color filter and the attack, so. I'm 
I would definitely need to mix it, EQ it, and adjust the volume. So that's how to create the foundation for a track. So right now, let me show you the full project. So first I'm creating kind of an intro and I'm just reusing the piano chords. So this is the chord progression and there's an eight bar chord divided into two chords. So I'm just using those two chords, but they're the same chords as the chord progression, which I've already created, which is this chord and this chord. But in this case, I've pitched down the root note one octave. And then I'm layering it with the texture from the augmented strings. So it sounds beautiful. So we can't show you the vocal switch of use because of copyright strikes. But if you want to check out the full track, the link will be in the description. So then we're basically creating a very ambient intro for this track. So the kick is coming in and I've added another percussion loop. Percussion loop four from the chemistry producer bundle. The bass organ is coming in and I'm just playing the root notes, very simple. So right now we're transitioning to the main chord progression. So this is our main chord progression as we've created previously and I'm adding the bass organ. But in this case, I'm also switching it up. I pitch down this root note from F3 to F2. So the root notes look like this. I'm just switching it up. So this is a very easy trick how to make it just a little bit more interesting and you won't even notice it, but it adds another dimension to your track. Very simple. And we're adding one percussion. Also added a little bit of reverb. So right here, I've added some transitioning effects and now we're arriving at the main part of the track. So let's have a listen. So right here, we're adding another percussion, which we've added with just a snare and some reverb. So this one, but in this case, I'm switching up the piano melody. So remember the chord progression which we've created. I'm just making some tiny tweaks, some simple adjustments. So I'm just using the slice tool like this and I'm just messing around. I'm just switching up the chord progression. So let's have a listen. And this is just the original chord progression. I'm just making it interesting and making sure some new elements are added, but I'm not making it difficult in any way. So building them again, every eight bars, a new element. I'm using the chord progression from the first part of the drop, but then I'm adding some new elements. So I'm adding the sequence, which sounds very weird, but lately I like to use some random elements from some synthesizers. And this one sounds very analog and I think it's a great fit. Just adding something new. I'm combining it with the noise groove. keeping it very, very, very organic. And then I'm basically reusing all the elements from the intro of the track and I've added one new element. And this is again, the piano melody. So in the second drop, for example, the noise groove is coming in directly and then I'm switching up the piano chord progression. So this is the piano chord progression. I'm switching it up again, creating something new, making it interesting.
So in some tracks from, for example, Adam Port from Kind of Music, he would use some of those piano chord progression switch ups. So let's have a listen. And then I'm kind of transitioning to the outro of the track by using some automation clips and I'm adjusting them to my preference. So for example, let me show you a quick preview of the final track. Make the vocal so well together with the track. And let me show you how to simply mix your track. So in this case, I've separated the kick, the drums, the melodies, and the vocals, and some of the effects. And I'm making it very simple by just creating buses. So you could easily do this by, for example, selecting all your drums, select Control Option on Mac, right mouse button right here, root to this track only. So all these tracks are linked to one mixer bus. So right now it's all about mixing, making it clean and making sure I'm creating enough headroom when in the end increasing the volume. So I'm adding some saturation. It's all about saturating your track. I think it's the best method and the easiest method how to create a clean sounding track. So I add some saturation. Then I'm using the Golfos AI EQ, which is balancing all the frequencies, removing the annoying frequencies. And it's just my go-to EQ for balancing and leveling my mix. So this plugin makes it sound so much better. And then I'm widening up the stereo image. So I'm using two EQs. I've created this preset myself. So I'm panning some frequencies to the left and to the right, doing the exact opposite all the time, as you can see. And then on the next one, I'm doing the exact opposite. So I learned this trick from a advanced producer and without messing around with the stereo mono phasing issue kind of thing, it works perfectly on your drums and melodies. So it's basically a stereo imaging tool which I've created manually. So we're now widening up the drums. So I think it sounds way much better when a track sounds very wide. And then I'm using the shaper box to just watch the waveform. And I'm making sure there are no crazy peaks in the signal because in the end, when you're limiting your track, when there are a lot of peaks, you will get a terrible result. So for example, the drums look like this in this case. As you can see, very, very clean signal. So then this drum bus is linked to a main bus. And then I'm in almost all of the cases we're using some low frequencies to create some more headroom in the end because you definitely don't need a lot of low frequencies in your final mix. Then I'm using again a Saturn 2 to add some saturation to already create some headroom because this will decrease the amplitude of the signal. And then I'm using a Pro L2 and this is basically a limiter compressor. I don't know what it does, but it's amazing. So you select aggressive, look ahead zero, at maximum zero, zero, zero. And then right here, you select the out and then select one to one. So you can increase the gain without increasing the volume. So right now it's at 11.2. So let's decrease it. So this is the signal. So let's increase it right here. So this is basically a limiter before sending it to the master bus. And you, you don't want to add too much gain because it, would, because it will destroy the signal. So just add it until it starts to sound distorted and then just decrease it by, for example, minus one dB. So that's how I apply this technique. So then I'm sending it to the master bus and this one isn't that complicated. So, so I'm using a Pro-Q3 to again, reduce some low frequencies because they are not that important when it comes to loudness. Then I'm adding a preset mastering transparent final master to just compress the signal. Then again, again, I'm using some saturation around 30% to saturate the signal, reduce any peaks and make sure it sounds very tight. I'm using a mastering piece preset, which is called catch the peaks because before I'm limiting the final signal, 
I don't want too much peaks. So it's better to reduce the peaks by using a compressor than using a limiter because it will sound distorted and it just simply won't sound that good. So then in most of the cases, I'm using this Pro L2 and I'm using another preset, which is called the EDM Punchy. And then I'm increasing the gain to plus seven, plus eight dB. And then I'm using an Ozone 10 and I'm just using the Luffs peak meter and I'm making sure I'm hitting around minus eight luffs to make sure my track is loud enough when I upload it to YouTube. So I would recommend you hit at least minus nine, but I think the sweet spot for EDM is minus eight. So for example, if you're not able to achieve minus eight, remove some low frequencies because for example, by removing minus one dB low frequencies. So what I did right here, so for example, minus 1.6 dB, and you will definitely be able to increase the loudness a lot. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out the full track, the link will be in the description, check out the samples, all the links will be in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for new videos. There will be new videos every week. And with all this being said, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you create some awesome Afro House tracks. I'll see you next week.